In this video, which builds on the idea of random effects we've been talking about in the last two videos, I'd like to introduce the idea of, of mixed effects models. These are models that combine uh, the random effects that we've been talking about uh, with the fixed effects models, such as uh, linear models, that we've been talking about previously. Uh, and so a mixed effects model is called mixed because it combines these fixed effects, these covariates and treatments uh, that are part of kind of what we traditionally think of as, as a model explaining a process. Uh, these, and these random effects that attempt to partition uh, the remaining unexplained variability into different sources and then an overall residual. In a mixed effects model like this, um, we would still have to have a, a data model describing this residual error. We need to have uh, a parameter model describing our random effects. Uh, and then we'd have to have uh, priors on our, our residual variants, priors on our fixed effects slopes and intercepts, and priors on our random effects variances. Looking at this graphically, we might have, you know, instead of just data from n different sources, we might have uh, combined x and y data from n different sources. Those could, again, could be sites or years or blocks or something like that. Uh, we have our fixed effects model describing that relationship, much as we had previously in, in earlier lectures. Uh, with priors on those, we would have our random effects, uh, which describes the variability, uh, potentially the variability in intercepts or the variability in slopes uh, from data set to data set, or, or the variability in both slopes and intercepts. I will say the, the simplest impl implementation, the one that I showed on, on this slide here, uh, is actually representing a, a random effect on the intercept, because this is now just an additive term that is moving the whole line up or down. Uh, but you could also write these random effects in terms of uh, interactions uh, with the betas. You could have random effects modifying the slopes as well. Uh, so we have these random effects modifying the, the regression parameters. And then we have estimates of uh, their variability and then a prior uh, at the highest level uh, on that, that on our estimates of parameter variability. So the idea uh, within this kind of mixed effects framework, uh, similar to what I was talking about at the end of the last lecture on JAGS code for random effects model, is that we use the random effects model to account for the unexplained variance associated with some measurement unit, group, plot, year, et cetera. Uh, that's associated with all the things we did not measure and did not put into our models yet, with yet being kind of a key word there, uh, because these random effects are gonna point us to the scales that need additional explanation. And then we would then could focus our modeling on adding covariates to try to explain some portion of this uh, variability. Uh, so like in the uh, earlier example, if, if the year effects or the dominant source of variability, I might look at, I might first look at process models to explain why there might be year to year variability, such as, you know, climate or something like that. Well, if, uh, you know, plot effects are, are dominant in terms of the, the uh, random effect variability, I might look at, you know, spatial factors, you know, such as soils or topography that might explain uh, the block, the, the plot to plot variability. Uh, that said, there's always something you don't measure. So even though you may add fixed effects that chip away at this random effects variability, that doesn't necessarily mean that you automatically remove those random effects the second you add fixed effects. You may continue to keep those random effects around uh, until you've really effectively explained uh, the lion's share of the variability at that scale. And you know, at that point, model selection might favor dropping them. Um, it's also worth noting that sometimes model selection set does not favor adding fixed effects. So sometimes model selection might favor keeping a random effect in, over you know, adding an additional fixed effect uh, that may explain some of that variability, but not, not enough to really justify adding that. Uh, so to think about this 
uh, as an example, consider the idea uh, that you're looking at some number of new young produced uh, per adult female from a population of birds. Uh, and now you add a year effect that shows significant year-to-year -year variability uh, that is coherent through the whole population. So if you've been measuring different subpopulations or different locations, you might see that there's year-to-year -year variability uh, in reproduction that is, is shared across those different sites. And so based on those estimates of year effects, you could be looking for additional covariates that might correlate with these values. Uh, and you could also, you could indeed look at the correlations between these, uh, between your estimates of the year effects and potential, potential explanatory variables without having to rerun our whole model. So you can do sort of exploratory analyses using the random effects themselves. And then we could then use that to refine our model and add additional drivers. Uh, so uh, some important overall take home messages about modeling uncertainty through random effects and hierarchical models is that it can be just as important to account for sources of uncertainty uh, if you're trying to make valid inferences and good projections as it is to add additional processes to your process model or additional covariates to your process model. And that we can use these ideas of hierarchical models and random effects to account for the impacts of, of either unmeasured or unmeasurable covariates. We can account for variability even if we can't formally explain it. And then to come back to the larger big picture we've been looking at over the last series of lectures about the assumptions of linear models, we now have this kind of uh, suite of tools that help us uh, look at the assumptions uh, the, of a linear model and how any particular data set that we're working with may violate those assumptions and gives us some ways forward for how to address those uh, violations.